Well, that's the problem. The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. This did not occur by chance. The Hubble Space Telescope can only detect objects that are one hundredth as dim as those detected by the James Webb Telescope, a collaboration between the United States, Canada and Europe led by NASA. Images of distant galaxies at the beginning of time and breathtaking landscapes of nebulae, the dusty birthplaces of stars, began pouring down almost immediately after it began full operations in July of 2022. It's as potent, if not more so, than we anticipated. A year later, JWST is still sending back massive amounts of data to astronomers on Earth, who are awestruck by its potential to revolutionize our knowledge of the cosmos. The latest discovery made by JWST, however, calls into question everything we know about how galaxies form. What kind of Earth-shattering discovery did the James Webb Space Telescope bring to light? Let's find out! According to science, the universe had a big bang at first. A loud bang. The most widely accepted hypothesis for how the universe began is the Big Bang Theory. No, we're not talking about the TV show. According to the Big Bang Theory, the universe was created more than 13 billion years ago from a single, unfathomably hot and dense point known as a singularity. It didn't take place in a place that was previously there. Instead, it started the cooling and expansion of space itself. It explains a lot of what astronomers observe with telescopes on the ground and in space. It explains why, as space continues to expand, other galaxies are relocating away from us. It explains the little glow that can be seen throughout the cosmos. It's a surprisingly effective and beautiful account of the origin of the observable universe, to put it briefly. According to the idea, Hydrogen, helium, and lithium were first created, and from there, all heavier elements were produced in stars and supernova. Cosmic inflation, a continuation of the Big Bang, even explains why the universe is so homogeneous, equally made up, and how galaxies are dispersed over space. A cosmic inflation sounds awful, right? However, it's not the same sort of inflation that you're imagining. If space had an enormous expansion very early in its existence, a lot of characteristics of the cosmos as we know it today make sense. According to inflation theory, the enormous amounts of energy present in space itself caused the cosmos to expand drastically a very small fraction of a second after the Big Bang. The cosmos continued to expand and cool after this time of inflation, although much more slowly. Space was rapidly expanded by inflation, which resulted in a very uniform surface. But the universe is not extremely uniform. During inflation, minute variations in the matter density that existed in the early cosmos were greatly amplified. The universe's vast scale structure, including the huge sheets, bubbles, and galaxy clusters, was finally produced by these density variations. That's the beginning. What will happen when the cosmos collapses? It is unclear from the Big Bang theory whether the universe will keep growing and cooling, or whether it will eventually collapse into another extremely hot singularity possibly continuing the cycle. The characteristics of two enigmatic substances known as dark matter and dark energy will likely determine the eventual outcome of the cosmos. If both are studied further, it may become clear whether the cosmos will end in ice or fire. Earth, the rest of the solar system, stars, galaxies, and interstellar gas together make up just around one-sixth of the universe's total mass. The impacts of dark matter or the remaining mass of the universe are visible to scientists. High quantities of it cause far-off light to dramatically bend, and it causes galaxies to rotate faster than they would if only ordinary matter were present. But the nature of it is still unknown. Astronomers are looking into the past when they use a telescope. Because of how long it has taken the light from the Andromeda galaxy to reach Earth via space, they observe the Andromeda galaxy the closest large galaxy to our own, not as it is right now, but as it was more than two million years ago. In both space and time, other galaxies are located far farther away. 
NASA's James Webb Telescope travels about one million miles from Earth to orbit the Sun around a stable point. A tennis court-sized sunshield shields its enormous gold-coated primary mirror, which is as tall as a giraffe and provides unrivaled vistas of the universe in infrared light. It took a while for the telescope to be built. It was originally expected to launch around 2007 at a cost of $1 billion. It was first envisaged in the 1980s, when JWST was ultimately launched in December 2021, its expected cost had risen to almost $10 billion. However, its intricacy caused lengthy delays, eating money to the point where it was once termed the telescope that ate astronomy. There have been stressful moments even after the launch. It took a month for the telescope to travel to its intended location outside of the moon's orbit, and hundreds of moving parts were needed to deploy all of its many parts including its massive sun shield that keeps the infrared-sensitive equipment cool. At a time when the universe was just 25% as old as it is today, new photos from the James Webb Space Telescope reveal for the first time galaxies with stellar bars, elongated structures of stars running from the centers of galaxies onto their outer disks. Astrophysicists will need to improve their models of galaxy evolution in light of the discovery of so-called barred galaxies, which are identical to our Milky Way at such a young age in the universe. Before JWS, Hubble Space Telescope photos have never found bars at such young epochs. One galaxy, EGS 23205, seems a little more than a disc-shaped blur in a Hubble view, but in the comparable JWS image from this past summer, it is seen as a stunning spiral galaxy with a distinct star bar. Two barred galaxies, older than any previously found, were found by the research team. EGS 24268 is another barred galaxy that dates to around 11 billion years ago. By directing gas into the center areas of the galaxy, bars help star formation and play a significant role in galaxy evolution. By directing the gas in part of the way, bars also aid in the growth of supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies. In various ways, the discovery of bars during such early epochs upsets theories about galaxy evolution. This early bar discovery gives galaxy evolution models a new approach to using bars to speed up the creation of new stars at early epochs. Furthermore, the sheer fact that these early bars exist puts theoretical models to the test because they depend on accurate galaxy physics to forecast the right number of bars. Meanwhile, the James Webb Space Telescope has officially finished its first year of documenting the splendor of stars and the nativity of their nuclei. The Rowe Ophiuchi complex, which is the closest location where stars develop, was recently shown in photographs by NASA. A lot of experts have previously taken images of this area, but the James Webb Space Telescope has provided us with a fresh and in depth perspective. The telescope's image of the Rowe Ophiuchi cloud complex captures the moment of star creation in unprecedented clarity, allowing for the first time ever. The image depicts a scenario that resembles a fascinating chaotic mass of gases erupting from the birth of nascent stars. The gas is illuminated from all sides, giving forth a lovely crimson glow. This is comparable to being present for the observable universe's first instant of existence. Protoplanetary disks, which can be thought of as the building blocks of planets, are also visible in the image from the James Webb Space Telescope. A protoplanetary disk is a whirling disk of gases and dust that surrounds a nascent star in the context of stars. Planets eventually form as a result of these disks. One star in particular shows out in the image as a large blue blob with the designation S1. It appears to push away surrounding gases, leaving an empty area around it. It stands out from other stars that blend in with the background because of this. The James Webb Space Telescope has had a very successful debut year, performing well above expectations. NASA claims that it has given astronomers and scientists incredible images and data to analyze. It has altered our conception of the cosmos and made it possible for scientists to conduct extraordinary remote area exploration. Amazing images of our solar system's planets, including Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn, have been captured by the telescope. In addition, the James Webb Space Telescope has enabled researchers to look back into the early history of the cosmos 
where they made an unexpected finding. The Satellite Observatory has already identified six massive galaxies that were present between 500 million and 700 million years after the Great Bang that created the cosmos. The discovery has completely altered how scientists currently believe about the origins of galaxies. Nobody expected these things to be this big. Scientists anticipated finding only tiny newborn galaxies at this early stage of the universe when searching for galaxies. Galaxies as developed as our own were what they discovered instead. Because this wavelength is invisible to the human eye and can detect the weak light emitted by aging stars and galaxies, the telescope uses it to study the universe. By looking into the far universe, the observatory can figuratively go back in time to almost 13.5 billion years ago. The finding that massive galaxy formation began extremely early in the history of the cosmos has upended what many of us had thought to be established science. So far, these items, which we have jokingly termed universe breakers, have lived up to their name. Since galaxies are so massive that they defy 99% of models explaining early galaxies in the cosmos, scientists need to reevaluate how galaxies formed and evolved. The common belief was that galaxies began as tiny clouds of dust and stars that grew throughout time. It challenges the way we currently think about the formation of early galaxies. Leja said, It's important that we keep an open mind about what we are seeing since this is our first glimpse back this far. Although the data suggests they are probably galaxies, I believe there is a chance that some of these objects could actually be hidden supermassive black holes. Whatever the case, even if we limit the sample size, the amount of material we found shows that the known mass of stars at this epoch in our universe is up to 100 times greater than previously thought. There are many reasons why astronomers could have been mistaken. Perhaps the processes by which early stars originated were significantly more effective than we previously believed. Allison Kirkpatrick, an astronomer at the University of Kansas who studies galaxy evolution, wonders if cosmic dust in these galaxies might be present, or perhaps cosmic dust was just different in these galaxies, to deceive Webb into thinking that the stars in these galaxies are older than they actually are. These galaxies shouldn't have had time to form. You just don't expect the early universe to be able to organize itself that quickly," said co-author and University of Colorado Boulder assistant professor Erica Nelson in a statement. It's bananas, she added. Although cosmologists had previously expected that the process began gradually taking shape within the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, Researchers do not yet know exactly when the first star clusters started to combine into the earliest forms of the galaxies we see today. The conventional wisdom holds that between 1 and 2 billion years after the universe was created, these early proto-galaxies reached puberty and evolved into dwarf galaxies, which began to consume one another to expand into galaxies like our own. The deeper into the cosmos we look, the more distant light we intercept, and the further into the past we see since light travels across space at a constant speed. By peering roughly 13.5 billion years into the past using the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers found that enormous galaxies had already sprung into existence very soon after the Big Bang, when the universe was only 3% of its present age. The size of the galaxies puts them in tension with 99% of the models for cosmology, which means that either the models need to be altered or the scientific consensus on galaxy creation has to be thoroughly re-examined, according to the researchers. These galaxies will push the boundaries of our understanding of cosmology if even one of them is real. The Milky Way produces one to two new stars per year. For the lifetime of the cosmos, some of these galaxies would have to be producing hundreds of new stars per year. Astronomers haven't ruled out the potential that some of these celestial objects may actually be enormous quasars or supermassive black holes, even though all the data currently available shows that they are galaxies. It seems impossible to explain how many of the early galaxies that JWST is finding fit into this imagined model of the universe because of their peculiar, puzzling properties. 
They appear to be either extraordinarily large, extraordinarily luminous, extraordinarily rich in heavy elements, extraordinarily active in the birth of new stars, or extraordinarily rich in gas, for example. The fact that we observe so many galaxies with these characteristics at such an early time is puzzling because there is a limit to how quickly material may accrete onto these objects. And while specific physical circumstances can cause an object to momentarily exceed that limit, it shouldn't be sustained over such a long period of time. As a result, when scientists study these very young galaxies, something seems to be odd. But what exactly is wrong? They argue that the Big Bang as the explanation for the beginning of our universe, as well as the totality of mainstream cosmology, may be erroneous. Many people leap immediately to the spectacular or imaginative when it comes to explanations. They propose new rules of physics, novel physical events, such as the existence of supermassive black holes at the beginning of the universe, as well as new exotic types of matter, such as a brand new, extremely long-lived particle that decays into regular matter relatively late in the history of the universe. There are a few pretty unimportant things to think about. And some scientists say that shouldn't be our first option. It should be our final option after we've exhausted all other answers. First, we should determine whether these effects don't significantly contribute to the characteristics that these galaxies appear to have. Secondly, we should determine whether our expectations of how the universe ought to function are consistent with the actual behavior of the universe. Surveys that will soon be conducted will cover an area that is approximately 50 times larger than that in which these early galaxies are visible, and we may observe a regression to the mean of this apparent effect. This is due, in part, to the fact that the early surveys that are pointing to these battles are coming from extremely small and possibly unusual locations in the sky. A thorough spectroscopic investigation of these galaxies, which is not currently available, will be required if it turns out that the light from these active supermassive black holes is polluting our vision, making them appear to be larger and more star-rich than they actually are. Another is that because JWST is outperforming, it's possible that these galaxies aren't actually brighter and more massive than we expect, at least not by the amount we've initially assumed, but that, at least in part, this is due to JWST's superior eyes making these galaxies appear brighter than they will actually be when calibrated. The effects of star feedback or magnetic fields, halo identification, the nonlinear growth of structure, or gas cooling, are a few examples of details that it's possible we misunderstood. In other words, it's likely that either the preliminary data is flawed, or our beliefs about how the early stages of cosmic structure development function are flawed. Despite certain preliminary discoveries that may ultimately indicate a tension between what JWST is observing and what our current knowledge of the laws and makeup of the universe is, any comments that the Big Bang standard cosmology is in trouble at this point are undoubtedly premature. The matter should be resolved by the current Cosmos Web Survey from the JWST and without more precise information, like from a deep, large area well-calibrated, spectroscopic survey, we are unable to verify whether these galaxies genuinely exhibit anomalous features. Even if they do, there are many astrophysical ideas that may explain why these galaxies would have such enormous and luminous cores without the requirement for any fundamentally innovative physics. The only thing that would truly surprise us at this point is if there is more mass inside these early galaxies than what is currently known about the ordinary matter in the universe could possible account for. And it is apparent that this is not what the statistics currently imply. It is entirely possible that commonplace theories like gravitation, electromagnetism, and stellar gas physics may account for what we witness, even if these early galaxies are as bright and massive as the most optimistic projections. The incredible capabilities of the James Webb Telescope already hold the promise of making far more discoveries in the years to come. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.